They're knocking on your door. There's four or five officers there. They're asking for consent to come into your home and examine your firearms. Your chest is in your throat. You're scared. Would you know what to do if the ATF wants to come into your home? Guys, watch this video, get the education you need, and join the fight for freedom today. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with an update for gun owners. Over the last couple of months, we have seen an increasing number of reports of state and local law enforcement going to the homes of gun owners at random, they say, trying to get permission to come in your home and search your home for firearms. What we've seen in the past from the ATF is a request to match up the serial numbers of the firearms in your home with the guns reflected on your 4473 form. Side note, make no mistake, they have a complete list if you bought your guns from an FFL dealer. So what, what a lot of people have been asking us over the last couple of months now, what do I do if that happens? I'm sitting there as the guy in Delaware was several months ago, enjoying a late breakfast with his family. The ATF, with multiple heavily armed officers, agents, comes to my door with local law enforcement, and they are aggressively trying to get consent from me to let them into my home. What do I do? What do I do? Guys, we're proud to give you a top five list of things you must do and must not do if that happens to you. I'm going to break that down for you guys momentarily. This is all part of the response that we have to be very clear on as gun owners against the new America that we live in today. There was a time when even asking the question, about the feds coming to your door, inspecting your guns, people will laugh at you. But this is a different America now. We're now under the, the Biden crime family version of America. And under the Biden crime family rules, anybody in the conservative space is now a target. So if you're a gun owner, if you're a pro-lifer, if you're a conservative of any kind, the government has been weaponized against you. That's why we're seeing uh, 5 a.m. raids by the FBI of peaceful pro-life leaders' homes with machine guns put in the face of young children. That's why we're seeing uh, gun stores that have been in operation for decades raided by the ATF with overt hostility on a surprise random audit. This is intentional stuff. And they are trying to intimidate all of us into meekly complying with the, the radical left's agenda on all the issues. And so this is more and more becoming a reality that we must all be prepared for. So if this happens to you, what do you do? Before I give you the list, I want to make sure that everyone has a clear grasp of the Fourth Amendment. There is many people that simply might not know, do you have the right to resist the government uh, to not let them into your home or not? Because you're not taught this stuff in school these days. We're just, we're just not. So without further ado, I want to read the Fourth Amendment to you in its entirety, because in case you don't know, you absolutely have the right to tell the government, no, they may not come into your home. They may not come into your car. They may not come into your cell phone to search it unless they have a warrant. Here is the Fourth Amendment. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall be issued but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. What does that mean? It means that our founding fathers just came out of a, um, a, a system of government where the king could simply point to somebody and deem that person a political opponent and turn his life upside down. His men could come storm your castle, search your property, and toss you in prison simply because the king ordered it. And so our founders said, not in America. We're going to have a requirement that there be a search warrant issued by a judge that specifically says what the government's looking for and where they can look for it before we're going to have the government go into somebody's home. That's what the Fourth Amendment says. There must be a warrant before the government can come into your home. Now, there's various kinds of warrants, right? There are search warrants. There are arrest warrants. There are other types of ways the government can get in there. But if they don't have a warrant, they are reduced to consent, that means you have to give them permission to come into your home to search it. If you don't give that permission and if they don't have a warrant, guess what? They cannot come into your home. I want to say that again. 
if you do not give them consent and they do not have a warrant, and I guess the third way would be obvious probable cause, visible probable cause that a crime is being committed, the government cannot come into your home to search for anything, including your firearms. So you have to steel yourself in your gut to say, I'm never going to give the government consent to search my property. And I want to be clear, I'm going to say home in this video. This applies as well to your car. It applies to your cell phone. It applies to your effects, to your papers, as the amendment says. All of your possessions, they are yours to protect. The government may not search them, may not seize them unless they have a warrant or you give them consent. So with that uh, context, I'm going to give you the top five list we promised you. Number one, what to do if the government comes to your home and wants to inspect your firearms. Number one, never respond with anger. Never respond with anger. Look, I get it as a man, as a conservative who cares about freedom, the idea that the feds, the ATF, FBI, DOJ, or even local law enforcement would come to my home and try to bully me into giving them consent to search my firearms, it fills me with a righteous indignation that borders on anger. You have got to choke that down if you're in the middle of a situation like this. If you respond with anger against a government official, it's not going to end well in the situation. Do not respond with anger. I want to be clear. If they have a warrant, they're not going to ask for consent. If they have an, an arrest warrant, they will arrest you and they'll use force to do it. If they have a search warrant, they will search your home and they will use force against you to do it. We're talking about consent-based searches. If they come to your home and say, hey, can we come inside and inspect your property and make sure your guns are all here? In that case, they do not have a warrant and do not respond with anger. Number two on our list. First one is never respond with anger. Number two, never grant consent. I've said it about 14 times now. We're going to keep saying it. There's a lot of ways that law enforcement can try to use uh, pressure tactics against you to agree to give them consent. So you might say, I'd never give them consent, but they're tricky. And there's lots of videos that document this. They can lie to you. For example, they might say, look, man, we have a warrant. We can get a warrant anyway. We'll come back, but that's going to take a couple hours. Meantime, we're going to, we're going to, you know, lock your place down. If you want us to get this done quickly, just give us consent. That's one way that might work. Or they might say, look, man, you know, if we get a warrant, we're going to come back here with a lot of cops, a lot of lights, a lot of sirens. The neighbors are going to get freaked out. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of ticked off neighbors you're going to have to answer questions to. It's going to be embarrassing. You know, just give us consent. It'll be very quick. Or they could say, you know, yeah, we can get a warrant, but your boss might hear about it. Your family might hear about it. There's all kinds of ways and all kinds of tactics that can be employed to try to give you a guilt trip into giving them consent. All of this could be a lie. The Supreme Court has ruled that law enforcement may certainly lie to the public when conducting these investigations. And so they could certainly lie to you. Do not give consent. That's point number two. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a... I'm going to call it point 2B, okay? If you make a mistake, let's say you're on a traffic stop, you're heading home from work late one night, you get pulled over for speeding, they stop your car, give you a ticket or give you a warning, whatever the case may be, and they give you your license back and your papers and say, hey, you're all good to go. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. And then you're getting ready to put your car back and drive to head down the road. And they say, by the way, just really quick question for you. There's no guns or weapons or, law or, or, or narcotics in the car, is there? If that happens, that's called a pretext stop. And that means that law enforcement has stopped you not for the original reason of the stop, in this case, speeding. They stopped you because they're hoping to find a way to search your car. That's a pretext stop. Tail light, you know, a roll of stop sign, speeding, you know, lane change, no blinker. They will find a reason to lawfully pull you over. And then once the stop has officially ended and you're free to leave, They'll ask you for consent to search your car because when you say, no, there's nothing, nothing, nothing in my car is illegal. They'll say, you wouldn't care if we searched real quick, would you? And most people, because they're honest people who did not tell a lie, they'd say, well, yeah, okay. I guess you can search my car. Number one, like I said, don't give consent, but here's point B. If you make a mistake, 
if you make a mistake and you grant consent and you're getting out of your car and that cop is getting his flashlight in his hand, he's having you stand back by the trunk and, and he has a, a, another officer is watching you understand and do not forget this. You can revoke consent. I'll say it again. If you make a mistake and you say, yeah, yeah, you can search my car and you're walking out of your car and you think, you know what? That was wrong. I listened to Aaron Doerr's video. He said, don't give consent. You can withdraw consent. You can withdraw consent. Simply say very loudly, officer, I've changed my mind. I withdraw consent. You may not search my car or you may not search my home or you may not search my phone. You may not search my outbuildings. If you make a mistake and you grant consent, you may withdraw consent. Now, I want to be clear on this. If they have consent for a moment and they're in your car, let's say, or your home or whatever, and they find something that gives them probable cause to believe there's a crime underway, they then do not have to listen to you. OK, so if they come into your home and they see if you're in uh, New York State, let's say, or Maryland or Connecticut, and they see a 30 round magazine on uh, you know, on your book table. Well, that's an that's a that's a crime right right there. At that point, they can lock the home down, get a search warrant and search the entire home. Uh, your consent is no longer required. So if they have not established probable cause, you can tell them you are withdrawing consent and ask them to leave your home. Now, they may not do it. They might do it. It kind of depends. But if it's being recorded in some capacity, that will give you legal defense later on if the matter goes to court. If you have withdrawn consent and they don't respond, that can be used to your protection in court. So, number one, do not respond with anger. Number two, never give consent. 2B was you can revoke consent if you make a mistake. Number three, this might be challenging to some of you, never engage in conversation. Now, it might seem kind of impossible. You, you want us to say, no, you can't search my house. I have to speak to them. Well, I understand that. You can use simple words. You can use things like, no, you may not search my home. That's a you know, four or five words. It's a complete sentence. That's fine. But if you engage in a back and forth, if you engage in a conversation about how many guns you have, when you bought your last firearm, uh, how your guns are stored, if you have loaded magazines in your firearms, if you engage in an ongoing back and forth conversation, you are giving them the ammo they need uh, to come after you. You don't know how, you, you won't know until it's too late. If you make a materially false statement, maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you were woken up in the middle of the night. Maybe you're intimidated. Maybe you just simply forgot. If you make a materially false statement to them, that can be used against you in a court of law. Do not engage in conversation with them. I'm going to reference in this, in this broadcast right now, if you have not watched it, go to YouTube and type in Regent University. Do not talk with the police. Regent University has a great video on this. It's 45 minutes long, approximately, has tens of millions of views. It is a must watch for gun owners who need to learn the reality of why you should not talk with the police. So number three, do not engage in conversation. Number four, always call a lawyer. So what does that mean? How does that work in real life? Knock, knock, knock. You come to your door. You see ATF there. Hi, Mr. Door. We're just doing a random search of the area today. Uh, we want to make sure your firearms that are on your uh, 4473 form match up with the guns you have in your home. Can we come inside for a moment and search your firearms? The response goes like this. Officers, I do not give you consent to search any of my property. I would like you to leave my property. I will now be calling my lawyer. And you may calmly close the door, get your phone, and call your lawyer. That's it. It's not hot. It doesn't get animated. It's very simple. Guys, I appreciate you being here. I do not give you consent to search my home. I'd like you to leave my property now. I'll be calling my lawyer. Thank you. Calmly close the door. And then call your lawyer. That's step number four. Now, you might say, that's great, but I don't have a personal lawyer. What do I do? Well, that's fine. And they might say to you, they might say, who's your lawyer? That's a common, re a common response. Who's your lawyer? If they ask that question, revert to question number three, which is never engage in conversation with law enforcement. Just simply say, you'll hear from him and close the door. Very simply. Now, if you don't have a lawyer, you can get back in your home, close the door and freaking Google and call yourself a lawyer, right? You don't have to have a lawyer on retainer to call a lawyer. 
any lawyer is better than no lawyer if you're involved in a situation like this. So number four, call a lawyer. And number five, last, but perhaps most important of all, record everything. Record everything. Some people have ring door cameras. Those are very effective for these situations. If you don't, simply have your phone, turn it on, put it on video mode, and hold it in your hand and record everything. And they might say to you, are you recording us? You say, absolutely I am. You don't have to deny it. Don't hide it. Just say it, yes, and move on. They do not have any way, any reason, any authority to make you stop recording, but you must have an independent record of what happened in that conversation because if it goes south, if they come into your home without having consent, that phone, that video can document what was said during that encounter. Because let me be very clear with you, your word against their word is not a fair fight. If you go to the judge and say, Your Honor, I told them this, and they say, Your Honor, he said the opposite. The law enforcement officials will win that debate. Pure and simple, that's the way it works. So you must record everything if that happens. And that way you have an independent record of what went of what took place. Now, once that's done and the situation has resolved itself, forward that video to a lawyer if you have one or to a buddy if you don't. In other words, you want to make sure that, that that video is not left solely on your phone. Get that off-site, get it to counsel, get it to a friend, get it somewhere uh, to protect that in the event this matter comes, they, they come back with a search warrant, you want to document uh, what happened. If they confiscate your phone, you would lose the ability to do exactly that. So in review, it's a new America. The Biden crime family is calling the shots and conservatives, especially gun owners, are being attacked by weaponized law enforcement agencies in ways we've never experienced in this country. If this happens to you, number one, do not respond with anger. Number two, do not give consent. Number three, do not engage in conversation. Number four, call your lawyer. And number five, record everything. Guys, that's what you should do if it happens to you. If this happens to you, reach out to us. Make sure we hear about this. We'll help you guys any way we can. In the meantime, hit the link below and join the fight for freedom today.